Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I want to thank all of you for watching my video in which I've shown that I've gotten rejected by over 400 places. Maybe at 10,000 subscribers I'll do a video of the same thing but with all the girls have rejected me. And with statistics on which lines worked the best and which did not. Uh, surprisingly, if I had to guess, I would imagine that the lines what that mouth do and also just in general tipping my fedora probably don't work very well. But anyways, like I said, that's for a future video. We'll do a very in-depth analysis. In the meantime, we'll be doing some more data structures and algorithms, and for today's video, we'll be doing stacks and queues. Hopefully we can go ahead and get this done so I can get a lift in. Alrighty, so stacks and queues. You've probably heard of them, but in case you haven't, stacks and queues are basically just two different interfaces in which we can interact with lists of items, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the operations that you can do on them. Uh, and the point is basically that they're really good for a couple of constant time operations, and we'll describe the interface now. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with stacks, where you can imagine stacks like a stack of pancakes, in the sense that every single time you're adding a new pancake to the stack, you're putting it at the top, and if you wanted to go ahead and eat a pancake, you would first eat the top pancake. You wouldn't be able to eat from the bottom. That's all the way at the bottom by the plate. So basically the point is stacks are lists where you can add to the top of it really quickly and you can also remove from the top of it really quickly, both in constant time. So there are three operations that we want to be able to talk about. The first is going to be pushing, where we're basically going to put a new item on the top of the stack. Let's imagine we added another pancake, that would be pushing. The next is going to be peaking, where we just take a look at whatever item is on the top of the stack. Oh, this pancake has blueberries, good to know. The last one is going to be popping. So in the basically the pancake analogy, what that would mean is we would take the top pancake off, we would eat it, and we would also, you know, basically tell ourselves what we just ate. So we would be removing the item on the top of the stack and returning it. So let's quickly go ahead and look at how we might be able to implement stacks. There are two ways that we can do this, and we've now covered basically the prerequisites for both of them. The first is going to be a linked list. So basically I have this linked list here with four elements, 25, 10, 19, and one. And so the top of the stack is actually going to be at the head of the linked list. So right now this stack.head is pointing to the node with value one. So let's imagine that we want to basically be able to go ahead and peek the top of the stack. All we would have to do is get the stack.head. Similarly, if we want to be able to pop, all we have to do is basically set the stack.head to the next element of the current head, which is going to be 19. And we don't really have to get rid of the node one or anything. The point is stack.head is just pointing somewhere else. You can see I have that arrow to the new head. Then finally, as far as pushing an element to the top of the stack goes, we would basically just go ahead and take a new element and say that new element's uh, basically next attribute is going to point to the current head of the stack and then update the head of the stack to point to our new node. Now we basically have a new top element, so that works out pretty easily. There's another quick way that we can go ahead and implement a stack, and that's going to be with a dynamically sized array. So let's look at how we can go ahead and do that. So let's imagine that we have our dynamically sized array or, or list or array list or whatever you want to call it. And right now, you know, it's got a capacity of six and basically there are currently four elements in there. So we're going to go ahead and assume that 25 is actually at the top of the stack. Basically, let's imagine we wanted to push the element 91. All we would do is just append it to the array list. And then we know that internally this dynamically sized list is going to put 91 at the back of the list and also update that internal size counter to say, okay, now the size is not just four anymore, it's got a size of five. Then similarly, if we wanna go ahead and peek, all we have to do is basically say, okay, we know the list has a length of five, so let's get uh, the element at index four. Okay, easy enough, now we get 91. And similarly to pop, all we have to do is really just go ahead and decrease the internal size counter or you know we could set that element to whatever, some garbage. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and return that element, change the size of our list, and now we're good to go again. Okay, so what are queues? Because we've covered stacks now. Well, think about queues as basically you're waiting in line. When you go ahead and wait in a line at say Chipotle or McDonald's or whatever, the first person who gets there is the first person to get their food. Anyone who gets there after the first person has to wait for the first person to be done in order to go ahead and get their food. So basically, you can go ahead and add to the end of the queue really easily, and you can pull from the beginning of the queue really easily. As in, I can say, okay, who got here first, come out next, and oh, you just got here, go to the end of the line. And both of those operations can be done in O of one time. So let's go through them really quickly. So push would be put a new item in the back of the queue. In this case, we would just be adding a new person to the end of the line. 
Similarly, we could peek. We would basically be saying, let's see who's in front of the queue. Who is the first person waiting in line? As you can see, in this case, it's the woman in the blue shirt. And then finally, we could also pop an item from the queue, where we're basically going to remove an item from the front of the queue and also return it. So we would take the woman in blue out of the line and we would say, okay, well, that's who was on the front of the line. Now the queue has been modified. So let's go ahead and similarly look at how we can go ahead and implement this. Basically, the first way that we can do this is with a linked list. And the one difference between the queue implementation and the stack implementation is that this time, not only do we need a pointer to the head of the linked list, but we also need a pointer to the tail of the linked list. And basically, the general kind of gist of this algorithm is that when new people are coming in and they want to go to the back of the line, they are put at the tail. And similarly, if we're trying to remove the oldest person in the queue, we want to remove them from the head. Okay, so let's do peaking first. Basically, all we're going to do is go ahead and return the head of the queue. Simple enough. If we're going to go ahead and pop, we're basically doing the same thing as the stack where we're just going to get the value of the old node that was the head. We're going to go and set the queue head pointer to the next node, and then we're going to return the old head. Same exact thing as the stack so far. The only difference is now when we are enqueuing an element. So basically what's now going to happen is we're going to take our original queue.tail and we're just going to say that it is now going to be pointing to the new node and we're going to set this tail attribute of our queue to be that newest node that was just enqueued. And this way we can always make sure that we are enqueuing to the tail for the future. So that's easy enough. Let's also quickly go through the dynamically sized array implementation. Okay. Basically, we now have a queue, which again is going to be a list of capacity six and a current length or size of four. Same type of deal. So if we want to basically push something to the back of the queue, we can go ahead and append it to the end of the list. And this time now the front of our queue is actually going to be that element 12. So in this case, we're going to return queue zero, which is going to be 12. That means that we're peaking and we're saying, okay, 12 it was first in line. It got there first. That's going to be the next one to be gone. And then the last part of this is we're actually going to be doing popping. So to actually go ahead and do that, all we have to say is that now the, the pointer to Q, which we originally had, instead of being at the zeroth element of the sequence shown above, it's just going to start by being at the first element. So now the Q is only referencing element 4, 6, 25, and 91. And that is a constant time operation because you're just moving a pointer. You're not actually shifting anything around. Okay, so yeah, in conclusion, stacks and queues, pretty basic, but you do need to understand them because especially when we're doing things like depth first searching and breadth first searching, stacks and queues are very important for the both of those, especially in the iterative implementations. So we'll discuss them more in the future, but this is a really important building block if you want to be able to get good at doing those types of algorithms. Anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video, a little bit of a shorter one, but I think that if I have the time for it, I'm going to aim to do an object-oriented video this weekend because I've been getting a lot of people asking for those. And uh, I'll put a little bit more thought into that one, and then we can all go home happy. So anyways, have a good day, guys, and I'll see you all soon.